So, um, after this interesting panel, lots of people still here, which is very good. Um, we have our final presentation for today. Um, and this is about dismantling and the recycling of yards. This is what this day is all about. And uh, we have Erwan Fauché, Research and Innovation Director of Beneteau Group. Erwan, please join me here. And um, with Guillaume Perben, CEO and co-founder of Composite Recycling. They will talk about the topic now for 20, 30 minutes. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yeah. So nice to see a lot of people uh, interesting by this topic. Uh, so I will give a short introduction about Beneteau for those of you who were not here this morning, just to give you a, a global overview of the group. And then I will uh, we'll talk about a, a strong partnership that we have with Composite Recycling, Guillaume Perben, and he will explain how disruptive we can be about uh, regarding, uh, regarding uh, the recyclability. So, is that working? Oh, yeah. So, as I mentioned already this morning, when we talk about, uh, about Beneteau, we have three main uh, topics that we are currently working on. Obviously, we are making some boats, as you are well aware, in four different segments. So, we are making some deboating boats, real estate on the water, sail monohull, and sail multi-hull. But we are also working on some uh, boating solution, in like uh, charter solution, uh, digital solution, boat club. And we have also uh, a third uh, topic that we are currently doing and working on, and not a lot of people are aware of. It's a housing division. It's quite important for us. So when we talk about Beneteau, if you, we look at some, some number to summarize what, uh, what we are, we, have, uh, we are making 1.23 billion of revenue. We have roughly 8,000 people in 22 different plants in seven different countries. So, regarding CSR, <coughs> as I mentioned also this morning, we started uh, in 2012 to, to, to work on it by reducing our, our VOC in our plants, and then we, we try to, to really work on and to try to reduce our CO2 emission in different topics. So today we have a program in Beneteau called uh, Be Sustainable, and we have three main pillars where we'll, uh, we, we focus on, on daily basis uh, uh, on it. So we have the engaged crew, the ethical growth, and today we'll focus on the third one, like this morning, which is called Preserve the Ocean. Okay? So, uh, the topic will be fully related to the composite, like this morning, but we'll really, really highlight and point, point out the end of the life cycle assessment, so the, how we deal with our scrap and how we deal with the boards that we, we produce and how we can dismantling, dismantle them, sorry, and how we can reuse the materials that uh, we have been uh, putting, uh, putting on it. So, I'm extremely, extremely pleased to talk today with uh, Guillaume Perben because I do believe it's something completely disruptive and that we can really, really think to implement quite soon in the different uh, boat industry and uh, with Aper. Thank you. Thank you very much, Erwan. Um, good afternoon. So I'm the co-founder of um, Swiss-based composite recycling. We're a company that was founded two years ago, and we work very closely with the uh, Ecole Polytechnique Fédérale de Lausanne with the Advanced Composite Laboratory. And we were always very surprised to find that the problem of the separation resin fiber and the reutilization of the fiber seems to be a very tough one to crack, so we just had a closer look at it. And what we found is that this is a piece of boat, basically resin and uh, glass fibers. And the problem of separation really can be addressed if we look at it on a specific composite material approach, not a multi-waste approach. And so what we've started to work on is pyrolysis. Pyrolysis is a known technology where you heat the material with no oxygen. Now, we heat without oxygen, but what we get after that is the resin goes away, it's vaporized, the resin part becomes gas, about 10% of the mass, which is a lot, and oil, which is a bit like a thick diesel that uh, chemical industries can use to make uh, new pl decarbonated plastics. 
Now, the difference between the two, this is before pyrolysis, this is after pyrolysis, is that contrary to this one, you can actually bend this one because all the resin is gone. But this is not carbon fiber, this is glass fibers. But it's black, so it needs to be cleaned. And how we clean it is with adding a little bit of oxygen and another of our secret ingredients. That's what we work with the EPFL. And as you can see, those fibers become black, and once we clean them, they come out. This is exactly the same sample before, after. Then it's cleaned. And once we manage to clean it, one thing you can observe is we have not shredded them, we have not moved them, so they're not into three millimeters part. What comes in comes out. So those fibers, you can actually reuse them. As you can see, they're super clean over there. And we make, this is recycled, 100% recycled composite material, which has recycled glass fibers and resin. Um, we did some, some tests with, with these. So, and this, this is where we, we, we talk a lot with, uh, with uh, our partners at Beneteau, because 100% recycled glass fibers, 100% virgin fibers. This is all great, but the, the real world, the industry tells us, why don't you do 50-50? So with 100% rec recycled glass fibers, we get to 93% of the mechanical properties of virgin. But if you do just 50-50, the hybrid one is 99% of the virgin fiber. So maybe that's the way. It's to not be dogmatic, and this is, this is why we constantly have this dialogue. So then we complete the value chain, because in France, they've made this great structure that is called APER that collects the boat. Now, the unit we design and that we're building at the moment needs to come close to the waste. It's a mobile treatment unit that fits in a container. So the separation I just showed you fits in a 30-foot container, so it can come to the APR deconstruction centers, do that separation on site, because we don't want to carry big boats, and then we produce the oil and the glass fibers, which are then used by producers like Shomara, like Arkema, that can make components that the boat builders use to build the boats. And now we have a circular value chain that makes sense. Um, where we are now is that we have, uh, uh, as we have IP, we have uh, um, so intellectual property, and the mobile units are being built as I speak. You can see it looks like a big pizza oven in a way because the waste is not moved at all. The, the purpose is keep the waste as it is so that we can recover the fibers as much as possible. And again, it is mobile. The idea is to deploy those containers to move from one center to another, again with the example of the upper, um, and treat the waste on site so that we can then reuse it. This is, this is enabling us to really adapt quickly to where we need to go if there's a hurricane, if there's anything. So, so that's the model we're pursuing. All this technology is very nice, it's proven, it works, but as a technology startup, it's very easy to fall in love with your own technology and decide that you're going to be the best and stay in the lab. And this is where having, since the very beginning, a constant discussion with the team from Erwan, constantly asking them, does it make sense? Why the container is that big or that big? It's a constant back and forth between the lab, the industry, and the clients. And having the possibility to discuss with a company that has a real, very, very skilled and competent R&D department like Beneteau has, for us, it's what makes us go from a great scientific and technology solution to something that happens. Because making it happen in reality, without, without the team from Erwan, we would not be there, and we really have a constant discussion. This is why this kind of partnership for us means, yes, we developed it, now it's happening. Yeah. Thank you, <laughs> thank you for that. And uh, really, honestly, I'm, I'm quite pleased because this morning we have we have shown what we try to do with helium, with uh, Shoma for the for the for the fibers. And here, it makes all the the story completely true and completely understandable. Tomorrow, we will be able to to go with some biosource material, with some helium, being able to to recycle it. And as mentioned, Guillaume, when we met. The, the company at six, was six months old, so it was really in the early stage, and I was extremely convinced because I had a guy in front of me who really trust and was convinced that it could be extremely disruptive for the boat industry. So for us, the idea of that was really to, 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 to work with you, have a strong partnership, as mentioned Guillaume, and really work step by step to make it feasible and really applying, uh, being able to, to apply it everywhere. 
So the idea behind that is really to, to share the know-how of the boat industry to help Guillaume to make sense for his, uh, for, for his, uh, for his team. So uh, allowing him to, to come, to visit the plant, to show how a boat is uh, produced, to make really this thing completely a reality. So extremely pleased for that, and thank you, uh, thank you uh, to share the stage with me today. Well, I, I, I want to say that uh, one defining moment for us was when we took all the team, we have a small team of nine, but we took all of them to visit the Beneteau uh, shipyard in Western France, and all of a sudden, all these brilliant PhDs in physics and scientists, I'm not one, uh, they met the team, and they realized that it was just, not just us saying, we need to fix this. When, when you meet the people from the real life, all of a sudden the connection is incredible. And we came back with a lot of energy. So great, great, great. Thank you. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Any questions from the audience? You were a bit quicker than this morning, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I had to rush. We learn, uh, we learn. <laughs> Thank you very much. Any questions? I can pass on the microphone. Yes? <laughs> uh, gentlemen, Neil Chapman from Boatshed. Could you give us um, an approximate, I, mean, I, I realize we're still at MVP or CP stage, um, in terms of the processing cost, either per kilogram or, or per ton? And what, also, a second question, uh, with the machinery that you have at the moment, what is the maximum size of a piece of fiberglass that you can process? Yeah. So, um, on the cost side, the bad news is you will still need to pay for your waste. Uh, we have people asking us um, if, if we pay for the waste, we don't, because that's an incentive to produce more waste. Today, the landfill costs uh, in Europe uh, range from 200 to 300 euros per ton. Um, that's what we collect as well. For waste you don't landfill, we collect the money. So that's the first. And then we have um, uh, the revenue stream is the sale of the fibers and the oil. Those are commodities. We work with our partners on this. So we have started with the Aper because our job is not to go pick up boats in harbors. We don't know how to do that. We don't know how to remove the mast. This is not what we do. We just take the stripped hull and then we work. Um, so the cost is basically the same as today to dispose of composites, which is the same as landfill cost for the general public. Then it's our job to make it something that we can sell. Now, the capacity... Again, we have this constant partnership with Beneteau, but also with the Aper. We go see them and they tell us those are restricted areas with retention basins, floors and everything. So they never store more than two or three boats at the time. So the container capacity, and we took on average, we validated the numbers again, with constant dialogues. One ton of composites per boat. You know, boats go from four meters to 30. So, so an average of one ton per boat. They never store more than two or three boats, so the container has a capacity of treating two tons of composites per day, and that's it. Because otherwise, we would be, it would be too much. So, so that's what we work on. Again, this is, we believe that the treatment unit must be specific to the waste. So we only do composites. We don't do tires, plastic chairs, nothing. We only do composites, and it's specifically developed for production waste and uh, old boats, recycling boats. So that's why the unit is mobile. We have requests for larger um, uh, production waste, but that's same technology, but different machine architecture. And uh, just to, to, to give additional information regarding APER, you know that in France, uh, every boat industry pay uh, an eco tax on each boat, so it helps a lot to, to, to promote and to, to set up this kind of uh, component in the dismantling uh, area. Okay, any, any other questions? All right, then we are uh, finished for today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Gentlemen, yeah, have a great thank show. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Some days remaining. Um, yeah, thank you very much for listening. Tomorrow is all about marinas and uh, tourism. Two panels tomorrow. Uh, I hope we will see lots of you again. Thank you very much.